The Pontchartrain Park Pioneers Oral History Project is presented by the Center for African and African American Studies at Southern University at New Orleans and the following sponsors. The National Park Service, the United States Department of the Interior through the Louisiana Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism, the Louisiana Office of Cultural Development, and the Division of Historic Preservation. My name is Dr. Clyde Robinson. I'm the director of the Center for African and African American Studies at Southern University at New Orleans. I'm also the director, co-researcher, and co-interviewer for the Pontchartrain Park Pioneers Oral History Project. This oral history project examines the lives and experiences of the original homeowners and residents of Pontchartrain Park. The Pontchartrain Park Pioneers Oral History Project's team consists of Connie Abdel Salam, Assistant Professor of History at Southern University at New Orleans. Dr. Mike Mahan, Director of Satellite Communications at Southern University at New Orleans, and Ms. Francis Helena, senior psychology major, Southern University at New Orleans. This interview is being conducted in the Millie Charles School of Social Work at Southern University at New Orleans. Today's date is August 6, 2019, and the time is 4 20 p.m. Please tell me your name. <clears throat> the, <clears throat> the last blue and white. And where were you born, Mrs. In white? New Orleans, Louisiana. In what part of the city? Uptown, around 4th Street. Uh, were you born in a residence or a hospital? I was born in a residence. Um, how many siblings did you have? Four. And were they boys, girls, oh, or it's, kind of it's five girls. Five girls. Five girls. What schools did you attend? I attended Holy Ghost until the third grade. In the fifth grade, I went to Rickard till seventh grade. Then in eighth grade, I went to Hoffman. That was on Claiborne Avenue. Then I went to Booker T for, for ninth grade. And then I went to 35 for... And that's where I finished in June of 1946. Were you, during your life, married? Yeah, I was married to Phil, Phil White for 20 years, and he died January 26, 1968. Where did you meet Mr. White? In high school, at 35. And what year were you all married? June 12, 1948. Did Mr. White uh, join a military unit? He was in the a military. He was in. He was in the navy. He was in the navy. He served in Korea and the other, Vietnam, and the and the first in the World War. So Mr. White was uh, was a career man. He wasn't a career man, but he was in, he was in he was at he was at Xavier, and they called him back. And then after he got out of Xavier, and he had the Korean War. Then they had the Vietnam War and they called him back for that one. So he served in three different wars. Uh -huh. Do you remember his grade when he exited the Navy? What them two little things up? Uh, <laughs> he was in the Navy. Petty officer. We wouldn't pay. What, what's the Lord in the petty officer? <laughs> Seaman. Well, that's what he was. Seaman. Uh -huh. Seaman first class. Uh -huh. but those two stripes would yeah, indicate uh -huh. petty officer. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, where did you all, were you married to him while he was in the service? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Did you all live elsewhere? Where was he stationed? We lived in San Diego, uh, transferred him to San Diego, and I lived in San Diego with, I had Philip and my daughter, and we went there for about, about nine months, and we came back. Now, how many children did you all, do you have? I, I had five, four boys and a girl. And two of them were born while Mr. White was in military service. No, they were all, they were all born before he was <laughs> while, he, while he was in the service. Yeah. Uh -huh. And when you were in New Orleans after you um, returned from San Diego, where did you live? Did I live? 
I live on 2nd Street. And then I lived in the Magnolia Project. So 2nd Street again, uptown, uptown New Orleans, and, and then the Magnolia Project on Washington Avenue. Yes, uptown New Orleans. Mm -hmm. When did you move downtown? I moved downtown in the 60s on St. Ferdinand Street, right off of Old Gentilly Road. Which is in the Gentilly, the Gentilly section area. of the mm -hmm. city. When did you start hearing about Pontchartrain? Well, you knew Joe Bradford, Mr. Bradford, you know Joe Bradford. But he had bought, we had all these children, we were all in one little old cluster, and he brought them out to the park and showed them where the house was, and that's how it got to the park. And what year was that? 1962. So you were living on St. Ferdinand, on Saint Ferdinand, Ferdinand Street in Gentilly. Yeah, and I moved out there. When Mr. Bradford showed, showed the children the park. Mm -hmm. And the children, uh, were you with them at the time? No, he bought, he, he, he picked it out before, without me. <laughs> so your husband did that, Mr. White? Mr. White, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, who was Mr. Bradford? Mr. Bradford, the guy who enticed him to come and go look at the house. And so the house that Mr. White looked at was mm -hmm. on which street? Providence. Providence Place. And was that the house you ultimately purchased? Yes, I did. Now, did you, were you aware of the Urban League's survey? No. Uh, what about the work that Miss um, Keller and the Stearns did to promote Ponce Trail yeah. Were you aware of the uh, work that Mayor Morrison, Delishep Morrison, uh, did yeah. to promote mm -hmm. Ponce Trail mm -hmm. And were you aware of AP, Attorney A.P. Turo's um, advocacy against Punch, the development no, of Pontch Train Park as a segregated no. neighborhood. So the, re, the way that you were introduced to Pontch Train Park was by virtue of the fact that your husband right. uh, came okay. and saw it and right. he was impressed him. by it. But we, had no, we, we knew about it, we tried, we, tried, we, we thought about it when they first started building on the old side and we never did, you know, We'll try to get it then, and then after Mr. Bradford told him about it, that's when they started looking into it. So Mr. Bradford told your husband about it in 62. Uh-huh, correct. And what year did you all purchase your home? 62. 62. You moved December the 1st, 1962. Um, in addition to Mr. Bradford, did you know anyone else? Mm -hmm. Not really. Now, how many children did you have when you moved into the park? I had four. Four children at that time. Uh, did Mr. White use his VA bill? Yes, he did. To purchase mm -hmm. the home? He did. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to us or describe for us your floor plan when you, your floor plan when you moved into your home? Oh, oh the kitchen and living room and three bedrooms and bed, one bed. And your front, and front back, back, side back yard. yard? Front yard and back yard. Were there any other young couples, young families on Providence when you moved? Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you remember any of them? Brian Johnson and his, and his family, and the, the Davisons, uh, and the Valerys, and the Edwards, all those other. <laughs> all had young children yeah, uh -huh. at the time. Uh -huh. When you moved into Pontchartrain Park, mm -hmm. Um, what was your profession? My profession, I was, uh, was teaching. I, I was teaching at Holy Ghost, second grade. And your husband. You were teaching at Hoffman, fourth grade. So you were teaching at both. He was schools. teaching at Hoffman. Oh, your he husband was, was teaching, teaching at Hoffman. And working at the post office that night. And you were teaching at Holy Ghost. At Holy Ghost. What were some of the positives? Uh, aspects of living in the park? Well, positive aspect was the, the children each had a room to themselves. It wasn't all crowded in one room. And it, we had more room you know, to span out. And the, 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 the neighborhood was nice. 
Uh, now, you had four children when you moved into mm -hmm. the park, uh -huh. but you had five children. Yeah, and Leon, he was born in uh, February of 63. So, all he knew was... All he knew, all he knew was... Uh -huh. When you moved into your home, mm -hmm. uh, what was your reaction? I was happy I had my own, own place, you know. Compare it to your home... Um, in the Gentilly section, mm -hmm. compare it. What was, was it comparable? I don't think so. I think it was a little better um, than really what I was. So you were relieved? Relieved, right. Um, now, did you know any of the people other than Mr. Bradford? Now, when you moved into the neighborhood, you found other people, other people there. Right. Did you know any of them? No. Did you have, when you moved into the neighborhood, did you have, what kinds of activities that you all do together as a block? As a block? Yeah, yeah. No. Were there, were there well, well, for we example, were in the neighborhood, backyard we did, gatherings? We did that, you know. Uh, yeah. But it was, like, it was like family, family oriented, you know. In fact, the little boy across the little, little boy across the street, and I take to some over there. He sees that my grace is cut all the time. He was a baby. He wasn't even born when I moved out there. But you didn't know any of them when you no, moved No, I moved out there. Mm -hmm. How quickly did it take for you all to become friends? It didn't take long. Now, Pontchartrain Train Park had a number of people who lived in it. Um, do you remember, other than the, the, the neighbors that you mentioned, do you mm -hmm. remember any other people in Pontchartrain Park? Uh, the uh, the Pierces, Brenda's mama, Liddy and the Adamses. I knew a lot of them on the other side of the park. The Ad Margaret Adams and all of them. Now, when you said you weren't ready to move on the older side of the park, mm -hmm. that's that area from 1955 mm -hmm. through about 1960, uh, 1955 through about 1959. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you all uh, move into that area? Because my husband wasn't ready. <laughs> now, let's get, in, let's get back to some of the, the other stories. There were some great stories and legends um, uh, and, uh, I would say uh, urban myths. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with the story about the lady in white? No. I would suggest that your children would know yeah, about right. the lady <laughs> in white. Um, what about other people? For example, um, one of your children mm -hmm. uh, played on the playground. Right. Who was influential in, in his life at that point, outside of your home? Who was what? Influential. Who influenced? Uh, Leon. Uh, Leon's, yeah. On I, the park. On the park? I feel, I feel I played on the park, too, but he wasn't, he didn't, he didn't play like Leon's played, but he but he played on the park. Shirley didn't do it too much, but he did. And Gregor didn't do it, but he got his from Philip. Philip used to be on the park all the time. My coach I remember is, Cal, is Mr. Calhoun, Mr. Cal. Mr. Mack, Mr. Mack. And, a, and uh, Mr. Holmes. Uh, were there any disadvantages to rearing your children in the park? Well, the only disadvantage I think was when they went to St. Gabriel and they, they had to sit in the back and they went to St. Gabriel's school and they, were, they weren't treated like they were supposed to be treated. That was the only thing I had. Well, let's, let's talk about that for a while. Mm -hmm. um, Gentilly Woods was the <clears throat> uh, Caucasian community right. uh, that was down... Press Drive. Right, right. Uh, a neighboring community. Right. Almost a spitting image of mm -hmm. Pontchartrain Park, for, right. save for the golf course mm -hmm. uh, in the large park. Mm -hmm. St. Uh, Gentilly Woods had the Catholic Church, right. a public school, school right. and a Catholic school. school right. So which of your children went to the Catholic school? Leon's and, Leon's and, uh, and Gregory. What school did your older children attend? They went to Holy Ghost. And uh, Sterling went to Cog Hill and River Shredders and Kennedy. Not Kennedy, John Mack. 
And of course, uh, Conk 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 yeah, yeah. Conk Hill is the Pine yeah. Strength Park neighborhood public yeah, school. Yeah. He went to Conk Hill. The, the only one who went for my children went there was, was Sterling. He went to Conk Hill. Um, Cause when I moved out there, Philip and them were still going to Holy Ghost, so they just continued until they go till they finished. But what part of the city is Holy Ghost? Holy Ghost was on Tyler Down, on between Daniel and Saratoga, right I'm off of Louisa Avenue, right behind Holy Ghost Church. Now, what kind of issues did Greg and Leon's have at St. Gabriel? You you began to discuss it. Uh, well, they were altar boys, and of course, it wasn't true like the, uh, the the white boys were. But they had, and they didn't really tell me too much about it. Uh, Do you remember the ditch? Did, yeah, I remember the ditch. You have to cross the ditch. Have to cross the ditch. Cross the ditch. <laughs> yeah, did did Greg and Leon talk to you about? Told, uh, they probably had, but they never told me about it. But I know they had the ditch. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And so at St. Gabriel School and Church, mm -hmm. there were disparities with, right. with, 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 the, the, with the children. how they were treated. That's why St. Gabriel was closed, because they had children of us coming in. <laughs> Let's talk about the recreation component of Pine Train Park. Mm -hmm. we, we touched mm -hmm. upon it. Um, Pine Train Park as a neighborhood had tremendous advantages. Mm -hmm. yeah. Playground right, right. and the golf course. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned that Philip and uh, Leon. Leon's mm -hmm. played mm -hmm. uh, on the playground. Right. Um, do you remember which sports? Well, Leon's played on played it all, and he was with that that Lakeshore district. He was on the All Star team for the Lakeshore district, but Philip just played all there, and he wasn't in playing on a team or not. But Leon played every. He, he did most of all of the all of the sports. There was a golf course, or there is still mm -hmm. a golf course, mm -hmm. tennis courts as well, mm -hmm. uh, connected to Pontchartrain Park. Did any person in your family play golf? No. Did any of your children caddy or, or, or raise, uh, no. earn money by caddying no. for the golf? No. Was it? Did you know any children who might have died swimming the lagoons. That little guy, little, uh, I don't forget his name. He's a little on uh, Prentice. That was his last name was. He lived right, right across from Joe Jackson, right across from Joe Jackson. He, he drowned. And that little guy got on, that, on, the, on the track who came and the train hit him. Uh, uh, Barnett Johnson. Yeah, 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 huh? Barnett. Yeah, you know the other little guy too, the little Johnson boy. Barnett? Yeah, yeah, Barnett up there. Barnett Johnson. Uh -huh. Uh, died coming from Dillon. Yeah, right. Uh, then they had another little guy lived down. Miss Barnes' little grandson died some kind of way like that too. Uh, swimming the lagoon. I don't know. I don't think it was swimming. I think it's something to do with the train. Uh, Did um, any of your sons or daughters become scouts? There were several well, Cubs and Boy Leon, Scouts. Uh, uh, Gregor was a scout when Mrs. Shanklin had it. But uh, Leon was. But Leon, what Gregor was. Now, as uh, Leon's participated on the park, uh, were you a booster club member? Yes. And what were some of your responsibilities? Well, just when they had somebody go out, when they had the, the, the thing I really remember was when they played a football game in Gatlinburg, and I went with, them, and I went with that, and they had like two other, three other black families that had been. That's when. Leon's Leon was a part of the All-Star uh, team. All -Star team. Mm -hmm. But they didn't do too much of that when he was a fine strand Paul. They didn't do too much of that. Were you a member of the Pontchartrain Park Association? When I first, when I first moved, they used to have, yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you remember any of your roles or experiences? I didn't do too much. I just paid a little, a little five dollars. Now, there are several churches, well, two churches mm -hmm. to be specific in Pine Street mm -hmm. Park. There's the Holy, Holy Cross, Cross Lutheran mm -hmm. and Bethany yeah. United Methodist. Mm -hmm. uh, which church did you attend? Did you continue to go uptown to Holy I, Ghost? I attended, so, uh, I, when I first moved out here, I still went to Holy Ghost, but then I changed to St. Gabriel. Gabriel. Mm -hmm. And did you personally mm -hmm. experience any negative? The only thing about sitting in the back of the, back of the church, that's the only thing I experienced. And what did you feel about that? Well, I, I guess 
since we had to do it, I just accepted it. Wasn't much, much you could do it in. Oh, oh, I didn't have the courage to do anything more. But I just I wanted to go to church, so that was on the head, and I had to go there. You know? Do you remember when it changed? Not really. Not really. You just remembered it, it eventually, eventually it, becoming eventually came right uh, being able to sit uh, where, where you wanted to sit. Now. You moved in in 1962. Mm -hmm. Three years later, mm -hmm. 1965, mm -hmm. was Hurricane Betsy. Mm -hmm. What do you remember about that? Well, I remember that the water came into the house and that we had to go to my mother's to stay. And that we, you know, you lo I lost some stuff, not like it was for Katrina. And uh, we stayed, we, we survived it, but it, it was hard. Yeah. It, we did have water in the house, but we didn't have it seven feet, we just had it to the baseball. When you moved back into your home after Hurricane Betsy, mm -hmm. how long was that period between Hurricane Betsy and your moving back home? I guess about two, three months. With Hurricane yeah, Betsy? Betsy. Mm -hmm. um, did you have Assistance in rebuilding your home. Did you have to rebuild? Did you have I to? had to re, re sheet rock, but I didn't, I didn't have no sit. Only thing I got was, a, I think, a washing machine, and they were giving them way over there, on it, over there, over by the station, over that way. Um, when you re upholstered mm -hmm. and, 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 and repaired your mm -hmm. baseboards and your floors, mm -hmm. did you get assistance from the government? No. Yes, I did. I got a, a, a SBA loan. Yes, SBA loan. Uh, what's the difference between the neighborhood coming back after Hurricane Betsy mm -hmm. and the neighborhood coming back after Hurricane Katrina? Big difference. <laughs> Big difference. If it's more still, still family oriented after after Betsy, but now everything's there now. In fact, I got a house next door to me that's the grass taller than you, and squatters in there now. So squatters are living next door mm -hmm. to you. Yeah, police had to come out there just last week to try to see the, to try to see if they were in there, but they weren't in there at the time they came. But they had been in there. And it's a house. It's a one of those brand new houses. Now, after Hurricane Betsy. The neighborhood, the family orientation. It was still there. Still there. Your mm -hmm. neighborhood, it's your neighbors returned. Everybody came back. Uh -huh. Prior to Hurricane Katrina, mm -hmm. did you start seeing the neighborhood change? Yeah, so it changed before Katrina. And uh, how so? For the, for the worse, not for the better. Can you explain that? Well... The, the, well, the Section 8 people came, and it just, uh, everybody, anybody came. It wasn't the same as it was before. When did you first start noticing that people were moving out of the park? Well, well I, I had to have a lady live next door to me, and she moved out, because it was getting to be the ghetto, and she moved out to, out there to, uh, by mail, you know, out there by uh, the mail, thing. so I guess it was before Katrina that still happened. But it's worse, it's, worse, it's worse now. So Hurricane Katrina mm -hmm. happens. Mm -hmm. And late August, very early September 2005. Mm -hmm. um, your husband had passed oh, yeah. at mm -hmm. that time. Oh, yeah, my husband did 50 years. <laughs> Who was uh, at home with you at that time? At home with me, myself. This so week. you were an empty nester. My, my, myself and my dad. My dad. My dad was staying with me, and he was up like a hundred. And we left with Miss Jones and went to Houston, and stayed in Houston about until about three about three weeks. Then I went to Georgia, I think. And then my daughter and I was transferred to Nashville for six months, and I lived in Nashville for six months. Then I went to, back to Georgia with them. Then I came home and lived uh, in, in Algiers with my sister. And then I got a trailer, and I stayed in the trailer for about a year. The trailer in, 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 in front of my house. 
Then the, they had to do something, so they moved him from the trailer to the to uh, the hotel on Old Gentilly, not Old Gentilly Road, the, the road, I-10 service road, that, that hotel. And then I got my house built, and I moved to my house in 209. And that's where I am now. Have you changed the floor plan in your home? It's pretty much changed. It's pretty much changed. And uh, how so? Well, it, I used to have a kitchen by itself, not a living room and dining room all together. And kitchen is one big open space kitchen. now. And three, and I have more bed. Well, I had two bathrooms before, but now I have a two bathrooms now. Mm -hmm. It's it's a little bigger, but it's but it's up the steps. <laughs> I gotta climb up the steps. Have um, which of the homes do you think is better? The the, the one I have now. And why is that? Because I have more room, you know. Are you still an empty nester? No, my daughter lives with me. Now, when you were evacuated, did you live with family? I know you were with your I, I, I lived with family, most of it's family. And it took you maybe two years to get back took home. Me, took me four years. Four years to get back home. Uh, And you say that now the neighborhood has truly changed. It has. Um, are any of your old neighbors still I on have, the block? I uh, have three of them, four of them still came back. Four of them. And my, my immediate part, four of them back. Mm -hmm. Now, since you've returned, have you resumed your uh, membership in the Pontchartrain Park yes. Uh, Association? Yes, I have. Are you a part of the Pontchartrain Park Elders Community, uh, the, the, the Elder Center? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And what types of experiences? Oh, that's uh, a good experience because I can play bingo every Monday. <laughs> Do you go on any of the excursions? Yeah, I go, uh, not too much out of town, but the ones that they have locally. And I belong to St. Gabriel Trumpeteer. That's a senior citizen from St. Gabriel. <laughs> okay. All right. And how has St. Gabriel changed over the years? But St. Gabriel, it's, it's all mostly black now, but it's still a, a family-oriented place. I'm comfortable there. When you rebuilt your house after Hurricane Katrina, uh, you did that independent of your husband because right. he had passed. Mm -hmm. um, talk to me about how difficult or how easy that was. Well, I guess it was difficult to get it done, but I got this different uh, grants and stuff that helped me. I couldn't have done it if I hadn't got the, uh, the grants. I wouldn't. I don't have a loan or anything, but I don't. I wouldn't have been able to do it if I hadn't got the grants. So you got yeah, a road got, home. Yeah, I got a road home, and then I got another kind of grant from somewhere else, two other kind of grants, you know. But I wouldn't have been able to do it if I hadn't got help. Did you get any assistance uh, when when applying for any of those? Yeah, I guess. From whom? Yeah. From children. Road Home. Road Home. Mm -hmm. And another, another one, but I know the name of it. Now, you mentioned that the home mm -hmm. that is next to you, that's mm -hmm. abandoned, mm -hmm. is one of the newer homes. Right. Was that one of the homes uh, from the uh, Window Pierce? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And no one lives in no that one. Home. But at first they had it up for sale, and Green up had it. And if something happened, they don't have they don't have it anymore. And they used to keep the grass cut, but now they say the bank have it, and it's the grass not being cut. Now, Mr. Greenup, is that the same Mr. Greenup who? Well, that's his sons. His that's, sons. His, that's the same thing. And and they, when they had it, they would come and check on it, and, and but, but the, all the signs are gone, and nobody's in the house. But there are hmm? squatters in that home. I haven't seen her, but the lady on the other side has seen her. And of course, going back to Green Up, it mm -hmm. has to be made clear that that's the same Green Up family. Right, the same family. That's, that, a, that's uh, a son. That helped uh, right. bring Pontchartrain right. Park right. into. But I bought my house to Mr. Ross. That was my brother to Mr. Ross, I think. Mm -hmm. What um, 
Uh, is anyone attempting to adjudicate that uh, it, property? They said they were, you know. And I called, but I suppose, but they, called, they told me to call the police, and that's why I called. But they did come out and check it. But it's like a forest out there right now. So what do you think about Mr. Pierce's attempts at providing people with new homes in Bonch Train? I think it was a good idea. I'm sorry it didn't work out for him, but it was a good idea. And let me ask you this very important question. You were two years... Four years away from your home. Mm -hmm. Why did you move back? Because I was too old to go anywhere else, <laughs> and, I, and and that was paid for. Are you happy that you've moved back? Yes. And you are satisfied yeah, with uh -huh. your home. Mm -hmm. And of course, you stated earlier that you are still friends with those. Uh, Pontchartrain Park residents who moved back. Right, I am. Mm -hmm. Are you still friends with um, any of the Pontchartrain Park pioneers from the earliest years who may not still be in the park? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Have many of them that you know mm -hmm. uh, moved back to New Orleans or are they scattered? They scattered. Since Katrina or even before? Before Katrina. What are your most memorable moments uh, experienced in Pines Train Park? Like what? Family? <laughs> oh, well, well, I, well, when I went to move to Pines Train Park, I was happy. I was able to have my own, and the children were happy. They, they, the children I had got along well together, and it's still, you know, be family oriented, but it's just that I was having a head in my own place. What do you miss most about the way things used to be in Pontchartrain Park? The people are not as friendly as they used to be. You know, everybody fight, you know, fighting them on. They're just not friendly. They're not friendly as they used to be. And you're, you're afraid not to go out because. At five o'clock, I'm in. I don't leave out anymore, you know. And so, but I'm I'm, con I'm content to be to be where I am, you know. And you know, you know, just life just goes on. You just go with the flow, you know. Is there any assistance you could get possibly from the church or from the community center in terms of helping you? Um, solve the problem of the vacant home next door? Can they advocate? Well, when you go to those Pontchartrain Park meetings, they say they, they, say they, they know about that and they, they're working on it, and that's all I can do, you know. Because they told me to call 311, I did that, and all they did tell me to call the police. So, you know, nobody really cares about the, about the grades being high like that, you know. Is there anything else you'd like to add to the conversation? No. I just want to thank you all for interviewing. I, I, hope, I, don't, I hope I did everything right. Of course. <laughs> well, you told your truth. You yeah, told right. your story, uh, uh, which is what we're asking yes, you no. to do. Uh, so in essence, you did mm -hmm. everything right. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's all I wanted. Well, Mrs. White, mm -hmm. we certainly appreciate you participating. Mm -hmm. And uh, we thank you mm -hmm. for participating. All right. Thank you for taking the time to talk to, to this old lady. <laughs> this has been a presentation of the Center for African and African American Studies at Southern University at New Orleans and the following sponsors. The National Park Service, the United States Department of the Interior through the Louisiana Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism, the Louisiana Office of Cultural Development, and the Division of Historic Preservation.